Hello and welcome to Click Archaeology. Today we are investigating ancient Rome. Did you know that these structures are entirely made out of plastic? Wow, what a fun fact to tell the family! Thank you so much for watching Click Archaeology, the series that makes your brain throb with that sweet, sweet knowledge. Well, good evening, laddies, lasses and lassos. Welcome to the click. You smell absolutely astounding today. And don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Have you done your homework today? Hmm? I see someone in the back there who looks very uncomfortable. Isn't that right, Jack? Have you made your homework today, Jack? You haven't done your homework, Jack? Oh my god, that is absolutely outrageous. You know what the punishment is for not doing your homework, Jack? That is right. Confident incorrect bingo. <laughs> Woo! So we're in for an absolute treat, everyone. Yes, indeed. So I haven't made a bingo with confidently incorrect before. So let me just go through the bingo card so we all know what treats we are in for. So for today's bingo card, we have anti-vax. Can't have a confidently incorrect bingo card without some good old anti-vax. We have <laughs> flat earth because, of course, we have flat earth. <laughs> Basic grammar doubling down. I should have like a triple and quadruple down as well in this bingo card. But let's start off with a double down just, just to be safe, okay? Bad Bad math, everyone loves a bit of bad math. Bad women's anatomy. Sneaky racism, which usually isn't that sneaky. I'm giving it more credit than I think it deserves, but, but for the argument's sake, it's sneaky, at least according to the person posting. Bad science. Instagram spiritual pages. Like, there are a lot of spirituality in the world. Some stuff is really cool and nice and philosophy adjacent and that kind of stuff. Instagram spirituality. <laughs> Not so much. It's like, did you know babies connect with rocks on a psychological vibration level? What does that even mean, Stacy? Anyway, bad science experiments. You know, like when flat earthers pour water on a basketball and be like, water can't stay on ball, hence earth flat. You know, stuff like that. Bad facts. Don't be sheep. And I even like photoshopped in a little sheeper in the background because I, I wanted to be cute today. Anything that makes me cry, <laughs> which is going to be like most of this video. Wild conspiracies. Opinion equals fact, which is like a confusion I see a lot. Bad evolution. You sweet summer child, which is really funny when people do something that is like really innuendo inducing, but they don't realize it and they keep going and it's super funny. Bad geography. Source. I made it the f*** up! Which is a surprisingly common source. Bad homework. You know when you have a math homework in school and it's like two plus two and you're like four and the teacher's like, no, it's five. <clears throat> uh, transphobia. I can't have a good old bingo card without some sweet old transphobia. Bad men's anatomy, because we keep things inclusive on this channel. Bad reviews. And when I say bad reviews, I don't mean actual bad reviews, like, oh my god, this hotel only gets one star because they had roaches in the bathtub. It's stuff like, oh, I, I looked at this recipe for a carrot cake, and I for no reason replaced carrots with kale. <laughs> And now it tastes like poo. One star, you know, when the reviewer is just unhinged. <laughs> and then there's one here, it's just... Bleh! And then there's an actual wholesome, which uh, we'll see if that one works out or not. Let's get into it, shall we? Pain is always more enjoyable as a group. <laughs> Yippee! Let's do it, shall we? When the atmosphere moves in lockstep with the planet, but it can also be used to traverse Earth's surface. Just scientism things. Wait, are they are they trying to debunk like wind? <laughs> because spinning floating ball earth is magic. If the atmosphere spins with a supposed spin, then it would be impossible to view clouds moving at different speeds and directions even against the supposed spin. This would require the atmosphere to do contradictory movements simultaneously. The indoctrinated are incapable of rational thoughts. <laughs> In the opposite direction of Earth spin to the amazing selective gravity and ball conundrum. I would love to see where the ocean bends and gravity keeps it there. Oh, I mean, for God's sake, this is like saying the Earth's surface can't be like kind of flat because there are mountains. <laughs> You know, it's the same sort of argument, it's ridiculous. Wind and that kind of stuff is usually caused by, for example, temperamental differences and that kind of stuff. Just because the ball spins still means that you can have smaller movements within that big thing. Same thing as you can have mountains on an otherwise seemingly sort of flat ground. <laughs> you know? God damn it! <laughs> this proves that the Earth... God, the Earth is a square, okay? It's settled. The Earth is a square. But you know what this means, everyone? Oh, yes, indeed, chat. We're not live, but anyway, it's, it's... I almost put it under anti-vax, but it's Flat Earth. Woo! <laughs> flat Earth! <laughs> Yay! 
I feel like uh, we're gonna have a lot of stamps in, in that one today. Isn't that just sweet? But click your bingo card is flat, doesn't it? It's really funny to take Spanish with people from different Spanish-speaking countries. Because the ones from South America countries are like, yeah, so no one uses Vostros? We don't know what it's doing here. And the ones from Europe are like, if you don't give us our beloved second-person pluralist due respect, the hounds will find you. <laughs> Why would they speak Spanish in Europe? <sighs> Spain. But, like, Spanish is a language, but it's not a nationality. Like, they speak Spanish in Mexico and Port Orico and stuff, but it's not like there's a place called Spania full of Spanish people. I love how Tumblr is full of people who aren't afraid to hang around on the bottom rung of the moron ladder. You make me feel better about every stupid thing I've ever done in my life, including the time I glued fake mustaches to my eyebrows. <laughs> You know the bar is low <laughs> when you can feel good about gluing mustaches to your eyebrows. Speaking of mustache eyebrows, this would fall right under bad geography. Boom. Hell yeah, baby. Yes, indeed. What? You think there's a ca country called like Spainland? <laughs> you silly people. Man, this video has just an amazing vibe so far. I love this. Leave a like and subscribe. I realize that most people watching my videos aren't subscribed. That is outrageous. Please subscribe. <laughs> okay, next meme. <laughs> Children under seven years old can see auras, spirits, and remember past lives naturally. This is before the ego forms and social conditioning takes hold. Imagine a world where we nurture these gifts instead. I would love for these people to actually make a comprehensive guide of the things they claim. Like, how would you actually make pragmatic steps to endorse these gifts in children? All right, little Timmy, you see that man over there? Just stare at him and penetrate his aura. Like, that's really weird. You're just teaching these kids to be <laughs> really starey. <laughs> Like, how do you encourage someone to remember their past life? What, what do you actually do? Anyway, do we have anything on the bingo card that would, that would do this? I would say this is Instagram spiritual pages. That's pretty heckin' accurate, isn't it? Like, I see this kind of stuff all over Instagram, where like, if you just hum loud enough, you can connect your brain to rocks. Why would you want to connect your brain to rocks? I don't know. 100%! They should do paternity tests prior to conception, in my opinion. But... What are you supposed to test against if the child doesn't literally exist yet? That way you avoid the reveal at birth. <laughs> Why hide? It may hold people more accountable. <laughs> but you realize, like, a paternity test prior to conception <laughs> means that there wouldn't be a thing existing yet that you would match the DNA to. <laughs> I don't think, what would this even fall under? Would this be like, is it bad women's anatomy or bad men's anatomy? I don't know. I feel I have to pick one. I'm gonna go, oh, oh my god. I'm gonna go bad men's anatomy for this one because it's paternity testing, right? I'm gonna go bad men's anatomy, but in reality, it's just a little bit of both in it. <laughs> be beautiful. Thank you. Globe lovers be like, a t-shirt, your inability to grasp science is not a valid argument against it. But me, look at this, solid, it holds shape fixed volume. But when it's liquid, it's shape of container with free surface and fixed volume. And if it's a gas, it's shape of container and volume of container. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Well, partially yes, but it does depend on more things than just the things you explained here. For example, the gas in container will probably take the shape of the container even without, for example, gravity because you have an internalized pressure. At least assuming it's sort of pressurized and you know the gas wants to be evenly distributed, that kind of stuff. If you have gravity beneath the container, you will indeed have a liquid that is pushed down towards the bottom of the container and kind of takes the shape of it. But this depends on more stuff than just like the state of the matter and you know what kind of container you have. There are other aspect to this, like pressure, gravity, and so on and so forth. So I would say this one falls on a little bingo card. Ba ba bing ba da boom. I knew I put this on the bingo card for a reason. Where does it where do I come on? Where do I have it? Where do where did I put it? Oh yeah, there we go. Bad science experiment. You know, it's almost there. They're kind of doing an experiment and using logic. They're just missing a lot of aspects that have to do with reality, you know, and that makes the whole thing like wildly inaccurate. Start with serious parasite cleansing. 
Uh, what? There were alien parasites in those vaccines and in much of our water and food supply. Honestly, that'd be pretty badass, but I don't think it's the case. <laughs> this with nano can push the soul out of the body. Wait, what are we even talking about here? Wonder why so many look like the walking dead. They are, technically, without a soul. Your purpose ends. I mean, I think that has more to do with, like, bad minimum wages, waking up at six in the morning and not be able to afford a house in your lifetime and then staring at your phone all day, that will that will basically make you look like a little bit hopeless and just like, give it the frick is the purpose of this. I don't think it's because nanobots pushed our soul out of our alien butts. But anyway, let's smack this baby on their antivax. <laughs> Yippee! So let's do a quick recap here so I can strategize how to get more bingos. We have anti-vax and flat earth, then we have basic grammar, double down and bad math to get a bingo. But we also have this one, where we already have Instagram spiritual pages and bad science. And down here we have bad geography and bad men's anatomy. We're kind of starting to fill it out quite nicely, but nothing condensed quite enough for us to have a bingo yet. Let's keep going, shall we? Why are the chemtrails left by jets not curved as they fly over the earth at the same altitude for 50 to 100 miles? Would you even be able to tell the curvature over that distance? The earth is pretty heckin' big. And, you know, if you take a small portion of the earth, this is even a mathematical thing. If you have a very small portion of a very large spherical object, you assume it's flat. Because for every mathematical purpose, the differences are so tiny that you can kind of just ignore it. So, so much of these logical stuff that has to do with flat earth, for example, just falls into that category. They don't quite realize how incredibly large a planet is compared to, like, the small portion you can see from where you stand, or, in this case, fly, I suppose. Wait, is this also just under under flat earth? <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess. <laughs> Poor little flat earth thing. If this was a physical paper, that part of the paper would just be worn out, so it just went straight through, I swear to God. Like, that thing's giant. How many times bigger is it than Earth? Like... The moon? Yeah. Uh... No, not bigger. Yeah, it is. What? The moon. <laughs> Nah. You just said you're so into it, and you don't know that the moon's bigger than Earth. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, it is. I don't think it is. It is. Oh, quadruple down, the yes! The moon is bigger than Earth. Okay, it Surely it has to be, because when you're looking at the moon from Earth, it's huge. But, like... It's so far away from us. This is not just doubling down. This was like six toppling down. I swear to God. Anyway, let's let's pop this under double down twice for a good measure. <laughs> that is gorgeous. Did no one correct her? But were the cameramen just like, I feel kind of bad for her in a way, because <laughs> instead of anyone, I mean, I suppose the dude actually did try to correct her, so so that's on her. But like, no one on the crew or anything were like, hey, hey, they're actually, you know, it is it is quite quite a bit smaller than the Earth. They just kept filming it and be like, this is content. I mean, to be fair, that's sort of what I do too. When, when I collect materials for these videos, I just don't do the actual interview. Okay, so I'll give it a pass. <laughs> She did, she did, like, quadruple down on her own accord. <laughs> GG. If gravity existed, it would have pulled all the apples off the tree at once. Globers be like gravity. Look at this one apple falling, but, like, the other apples aren't affected by it. All right, baby, let's bring up good old paint for this one. Maybe we can just make it, make it in Photoshop instead. Boom, baby. All right, everyone, welcome to Click Academy. So today, we have a science experiment. Think about having a little fluffy tree that looks like this. Okay, there's a beautiful tree, don't question it. And then we have a couple of apples in this tree. We'll keep it simple with two apples for now. Both of these have a gravitational pull downwards. That is basically mg, or the mass times the gravitational constant. This is going to be your force that pushes the apple downwards. And for this very simple experiment, we're assuming the apples are of equal size. And now, of course, the aspect that makes a fruit fall down is as it gets ripe, the little connector here to the tree gets weaker and weaker, right? Because for the apple to stay up, we need another force right here that cancels out the mg, which we usually call n. That's like the counter force to anything sitting on the ground or getting pulled down. When n becomes smaller than mg, 
that's when the apple falls down and hits the ground, right? So basically when this one becomes smaller than the gravitational constant, you can say that this one snaps and then it falls down. So this has to do with when the apple ripens, not so much that gravity just isn't real for the rest of the apples in the tree. But not so fast, you're not getting away that easy. Welcome to bingo. So let's see now. I would say this just falls on the bad science because it's very confidently trying to debunk something while just ignoring everything else. It's like kind of cherry picking science in a way. It's really funny. It's just ignoring everything that could explain it. Even really basic stuff like, oh, when a fruit gets ripe, it usually stays less hard on the plant. You know, just <laughs> ignore that. Gravity just isn't real. That's a better explanation. God damn it. <laughs> Why are her legs so hairy? Readers added context they thought people might want to know. The reason is because women naturally have leg hair. Okay, let's let's see let's see now. Let's see now. So this falls under a couple of potential ones, right? One is just bad women's anatomy, but the other one is also transphobia because it's like suggesting a bunch of things and like the undertone and dog whistle of this post is pretty pretty nasty. So I'm going to put this on the transphobia for good measure because I believe we can probably find bad women's anatomy in other posts as well. So I'm going to be strategic with this one. Congratulations. You ended up on the bingo card because of your stupid tweet. They don't want you well hydrated. They want you well floridated. All right. They want a person drinking about a gallon per day. That's an awful lot of hydrofluoric acid to ingest, which, by the way, dissolves bone. <laughs> Teeth are like bones. Wanna know where tooth decay comes from? Ain't just sugar. <laughs> so tap water is acid <laughs> that will melt your bones. I'm gonna be honest, fam, if you were just straight up drinking acid, I think there are other parts of your body that would, like, start, you know, burning first, maybe. Like, I don't know, the lips touching the glass, for example. <laughs> what? All right, everyone, let's go bone dissolving. What is, I'm gonna actually put this on the wild conspiracy. Like, don't drink water because your bones are gonna melt. <laughs> wow. I actually just googled this real quick, because for me, sometimes stuff is just lost in translation. And water fluoridation actually is the opposite. Water fluoridation is the controlled adjustment of fluoride to a public water supply, solely to reduce tooth decay. Fluoridated water contains fluoride at a level that is effective for preventing cavities. This can occur naturally or by adding fluoride. A fluoridated water operates on tooth surfaces. In the mouth, it creates low levels of fluoride in saliva, which reduces the rate at which tooth enamel demineralizes and increases increases the rate at which it remineralizes at the early stages of cavities. Typically, a fluorided compound is added to drinking water, a process that is in the US cost an average about $1.26 per person year. So this very much like falls into the, the same argument as I see a lot with anti-vax stuff, which is kind of funny. It's like, isn't it weird how all the people that get the disease are the ones that just happen to not get the vaccine? You know, it's sort of like a similar line of logic. It's just the complete opposite. We have very much come full circle, haven't we? Shadows don't lie, NASA does. The loss of perspective changing the size of the light source proves that NASA's eclipse shadow size narrative from a still fat sun 93 million fake miles away is a bunch of balonga. Question anything with .gov on their website, hashtag research flat earth. Oh, they even have some images here to show us their point. Goody, let's get into it. The moon compared to the USA, so it's about this big. NASA says the moon is this size, but the shadow is only this size. Moon's true size. I guess this is like the, the shadow patterns when the moon is passing throughout the sky. I mean, yeah, it's pretty far away. That would make sense. On a heliocentric model, the sun and moon are the same size due to perspective. <laughs> but... On the geocentric model, they are the same size. Okay, we have a little, cons <laughs> a little experiment here with a flashlight and a ball. The shadow should also be the same size. Fall science. This violates loss of true size perspective. Or the shadow can be larger but never smaller. But your own experiment literally contradicts this. If you move the flashlight closer to this ball casting the shadow, for example, the bottom example is supposed to show it as bigger, it can never be larger. What do you think happened if you just move the ball even closer to the flashlight? The shadow would grow to a point where it completely eclipses it, right? <laughs> and I've also realized that the angle of the light is also drawn very particular, so it only touches the ball. You'll notice like the arch of light is different on the two flashlights, which is just like a funny detail. 
<laughs> they just point out how botched this picture is. But yeah, no, the closer to a light source you is, typically the shadow will be larger. Yeah, and it works in both ways. Like, it's smaller and larger. So your own experiment proves that point, but you're saying it's the opposite, which is wild. Well, fellow scientific squad fam watching at home, you know what? This means we have another stamp for our bingo card. Yes, and I, I think it just goes on a flat earth like a portal thing. I put such a cute little graphic on this one, and I don't think it's gonna be visible by the end of this. <laughs> If Bugs Bunny drops an iron anvil from the top of a building into a pool of liquid mercury, the anvil will fall through the surrounding medium of less dense air, but will float in the liquid mercury because mercury has a density nearly twice that of iron. Gravity, in quotation marks, is R-worded. <laughs> Uh, added context. The only thing this video proves is that iron is less dense than mercury. It does nothing to disprove gravity. I mean, this is the same as just like, ooh, this piece of wood floats in water, but just using different mediums. But the principle is exactly the same. If something is higher density, the gravity will affect it more and push it down further, which means that anything floating inside it will be at the top because that is pushed down less so than the medium itself. Hence, floaty floaty. Oh my god, it keeps this an entire thread of stuff. Proof of the globe is a bunch of books. Proof of the <laughs> flat earth is my eyeballs. Imagine believing you live on a spinning ball because scientists are yet to prove a formula for calculating buoyant force without invoking gravity. Yeah, but like buoyancy wouldn't really exist though, right? Without gravity, that's the whole point. You get the buoyancy when you have a medium of a certain weight getting pulled by gravity, which means stuff on top of it is pulled by gravity less, so it stays on top of the medium. That is basically buoyancy. What, 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 what do you suggest the buoyancy would be then? Maybe, just maybe, we don't actually understand absolutely everything there is in the world to understand. I mean, that's a fair point. You have constantly evolving physical models, for example. If you read books about this kind of stuff, I'm actually reading one right now, which is really Good. It's called this one, The Origin of Time, uh, Stephen Hawking's Final Theory. can very much recommend picking this one up, it's very good. But a big portion of the book actually goes into a bit of history of physics, for example. How historical physicists argue various things about the universe. And you find out how our current theories don't hold up in certain instances. One example of this, for example, is that Mercury's orbit was slightly off according to the Newtonian model than it should have been. So people theorized back in the day that this could have been because of another planet messing with its orbit, a planet that was even closer to the sun than Mercury is. But when they applied the new models, which was the Einstein's model of relativity, that canceled out this variance, meaning that there are instances where, you know, the old models don't completely add up. And this is something you use all the time in physics. You simplify reality to a point where you can calculate it, and then you get more and more advanced models to explain more and more about reality. You have the same thing, for example, in physics or mechanics, where you, for example, ignore wind resistance because it is so incredibly complex to calculate for. So if you've done physics, for example, in high school, you typically don't calculate air resistance. It's like one defining factor of physics at that level to just ignore it. And trust me, you ignore it for a reason, because it is painful to account for. You have entire courses for entire semesters in uni f studying, for example, engineering that only talks about like fluid mechanics and that kind of stuff. It is a pain in the butt and it depends on shape, it depends on speed, it depends on medium, all that kind of stuff. There's a reason wind tunnels are such a big deal nowadays. So the argument that we don't understand everything yet is pretty accurate, but the problem is that you're moving it too far back. You're arguing at a level of that science was at like a thousand years ago, which which is so counterproductive. Like, come on. I am really sorry that it's such an emotionally difficult idea for a lot of you professional understanders to <laughs> consider. No, no, they definitely do consider it. One interesting argument, for example, that has been going on for quite a long time is the beginning of the universe, that we don't quite understand it. You know, the purpose of the beginning, what can happen before time and space even existed. You know, the very fabrics of our own reality sort of break down and it becomes the inverse, like a backward singularity, so to say. It's really wacky. It's, it's very cool, but of course it puts into question what we understand about the world and the statistics around it and the math and the physics. So. No, this is just you that haven't actually read anything regarding this at all, apart from, like, Facebook groups. Gravity doesn't exist. 9.8. Oh, they actually got the, got the number right. Uh, meter squared fall rate, okay, uh, doesn't apply in water. <laughs> no, it, it still applies in water. It's just you have to have another force coming up from below. You, oh my, it's the same argument as with the apple. Click Academy time, there's... 
pisses me off to an unreasonable extent. Oh my god, okay, well, welcome to Click a Cat- Okay, wait, no, I have to write this proper. Come on now, Click, uh, calm, calm down. Welcome to Click Academy. So, today, we have this very interesting experiment. Imagine, for example, this is you. This is you, very happy. You're a happy boy because you're in Click Academy. Isn't that beautiful? You have a force pulling you down, and the force is equal to mg. Your mass times the gravitational constant, depending on which planet you're standing on, which in this case happens to be Earth, that is 9.8, right? The reason you're not falling through the ground is because when you're standing on the ground, the pressure you can feel on your little feetsies is another force pushing upwards, which is called N, right? This is the normal force, it's called in Sweden at least, I don't know what the frick Americans call it, but that's basically what, what you call it. And this is the counter force. You can think of it as, for example, what you see on a scale when you're standing on a scale. That is what the ground pushes on top of your feet to make sure you don't fall through the floor because gravity is dragging you, right? And the same thing would work in water, you know, probably further down into the water because you need to float and hence you need to be further down into the medium until, you know, enough of your body in the medium has the same weight as the medium. That's how it works. This is, this is like ancient shit, man. People figured this out thousands of years ago and you're sitting on Facebook being like, <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's, uh, <clears throat> let's get on with the bingo, shall we? That makes me happy at least. Oh, added context, it doesn't follow that speed because water imparts drag. Also, this is an 11th grade explanation of Newtonian physics. Indeed, a correct description of Newtonian physics need calculus. It does, and it's the same thing as air resistance. For example, if you fall through the atmosphere with air resistance, you meet the point where you stop accelerating. You, as a human, or any shape for that matter, has a maximum speed at which it can travel through the atmosphere if you fall. Right? And that is because air resistance increases squared with speed. So at a certain point, the force the air resistance applies on you is equal to the gravitational pull, meaning that you're going to maintain the same speed once you reach that point. And the, the same logic here would apply in water. It's just, it's just like friction, basically. Oh, but we have a little bit of... I am losing my mind! Okay, what do we have here? This is like... <laughs> which, which moment is for everything? I would say bad facts, because th this is just awful facts. It's just, it's just so bad. <laughs> it's not even facts. You just made something up. If you don't learn how to control your own mind, other people will control it for you. Wake up, single, starey, eyeball. Earth is flat, space is fake. Up, 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 before we keep going, that is very beautiful. I've been wanting to cross this out for a bit. Don't be a sheep. <laughs> Anything mainstream is fake. Uh, space is fake. Good stuff. Sunscreen causes cancer. Oh my god. You know, I fully believe that they take news and sources completely out of context to prove their points. There was actually news articles a little while ago talking about how, how sunscreen is bad. But if you read further into the articles, it's not actually that sunscreen itself is bad. It's that a certain statistic, a certain portion of the population gets like overconfident when they wear sunscreen and they stay out in the sun for too long so the sunscreen doesn't protect them completely and they get problems with their skin because of it. But it's like nothing to do with the substance itself, the, the thing actually helps. The same argument would be like, don't wear a seatbelt because it makes you more confident in traffic and you're more likely to crash. It's a, it's a very silly argument to make and I wish they wouldn't use those kind of headlines because it makes people like this just use it in wild context. Abortion is child sacrifice, war is a racket, vaccines are poison, climate change is a hoax, the world is underpopulated, like, compared to what? You know, under overpopulation just have to do with, like, how much the world can support and how much we can support ourselves without destroying the Earth. It's not a fixed number. It depends heavily on technology as well. Evolution is awkward. <laughs> you know that someone's made a solid, solid argument where, like, oh, you know, evolution? Slur. <laughs> nuclear weapons don't work. We have recordings of it, fam. People have died from nuclear weapons. Are you kidding me? Dinosaurs never existed. We are at the center of all observable creation. Life is beautiful. I agree with the last one, okay? I'll give you half a gold star for that. I bet this dude's intellect would sink in mercury. This is all the same thread. That is wild. Oh my god. But yeah, that's a very that's a very good burn. Snowflake 222. I'll give you a little gold star on your forehead. You're very welcome. A word that contains a synonym inside of it is called a kangaroo word. Masculine, male, chicken, hen, honorable, noble, blossom, bloom. Oh, that's very cute. You can make like cool little posters with this. Literally none of the internal words are synonyms of the whole words. <laughs> that is stupid. Uh, let's do a little bit of Google, shall we? Synonym for chicken, 
Hen, honorable, noble. Synonym for bloom, blossom. Synonym for male, masculine. Oh my god, you know those things in life that you could just like double check with Google real quick, like super basic facts to not look like a fool in comment sections? I think not! Alright, let's check, check, check this out, shall we? Okay, let's see what basic grammar. Oh, it's not really basic grammar, is it? I mean, maybe it is basic grammar. I would put this on the basic grammar. <laughs> it's funny. We're probably gonna have more there anyway. Good old sweet basic grammar. The bane of confident and correct. Dude, being gay, lesbian, trans, the T word, femboy, travesty. <laughs> you better behave or I will identify as a travesty. Yeah, I mean, I know that's not the word he meant to write, but it's just really funny that people that spew their opinions about this kind of stuff can't even spell the words right. Anyway, let's move on, shall we? Etc. doesn't mean you're part of the LGBT community. The first thing doesn't imply the second. Currently, no heterosexual couple, gay, lesbian, etc. Is this just really poor formatting, or does this, this person doesn't understand anything about anything? Are a minority, and no heterosexual couple who are LGBT members are a minority of a minority. B <laughs> I don't even understand what the argument is supposed to be. You're saying that if you're part of, like, two groups at the same time, which would technically be a smaller minority if you want to consider both variables in a population statistic, it's not a minority of a Like, now you're just arguing pedantics. It's really weird. For example, I live in South America, and one of the most woke countries is Argentina. <laughs> Now, Ipsos made a study about how many LGBT people are in that country. There is almost 8% of the population was LGBT, but there is uh, wrong here, because they include people who claim being gay, lesbian, etc., even though they never said they were part of the LGBT nonsense. Oh, so you're claiming that gay people aren't part of the LGBT because these are, like, different things? I mean, I suppose you can choose whether or not you, like, identify with a community wh while being, like, part of the demographic, I suppose. But, but this is really weird. I don't understand what the point of your argument is. So actually, there are a little percentage of the 8%. So please, next time, take into account this. My favorite couple in Baldur's Gate 3%. <laughs> I don't understand what the argument... It's so weird. It's so weird. This seems like one of those kind of people who are just trying to be desperately argumentative and, like, play devil's advocate about things that really don't matter. Like, most of this comment seems to just be arguing pedantics and, like, how we define statistical minorities. It's really weird. And you're not even doing it well. <laughs> this comment is very silly. Uh, technically, Wales is not the country. Uh, Wales is very much a country. Name one thing that makes it a country just because you call it LOL. Having its own identity, culture, national anthem, flag. Texas has own flag. My neighbor has own flag. LOL. Jokes. Wales is a country because it's officially recognized as a country. End of story. Your silly neighbor isn't recognized as a country. b b b bungo Okay, let's see. Oh, b b b b bad geography, baby. Hell yeah, I love myself some bad geography. That is beautiful. Thank you for contributing to today's bingo. This guy is a farmer. When I say things like, it's a fact and not my opinion that the sun is smaller than the earth, and that no one on Earth can demonstrate that the sun is larger than the Earth. These are not examples of me being arrogant. They are examples of me being correct. <laughs> opinion equals fact. I mean, Jesus, when you're saying that you have the opinion <laughs> that the sun is smaller than the Earth, I think people conflate what opinion and fact means. Like, God damn it. These are not examples of me being arrogant. They are examples of me being correct. And the fact that I am correct apparently triggers your ego. <laughs> and you become the one who lashes out and calls me arrogant. Well, if your opinion is that the sun is smaller than the earth, I think I can have the slightly less factual opinion that you're just arrogant. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Which is the fallacy of the straw man. I am not your arrogant, pejorative straw man. I am a man who is telling the truth. I am not limited by your perception of me. Do you see how that works? If there is anyone on Earth, any academic, astronomer, mathematician, astrophysicist, any biodynamic, regenerative, or professional farmer, anyone who thinks they possess a profound cosmological understanding, who wishes to debate publicly with me about the truth of the following assertions, then I welcome that public debate. We will debate that the sun is measurably, observably, demonstrably smaller or larger than the Earth. This guy should check out that little flat Earth experiment a few posts ago where they had like the flashlight and the ball, you know? And that mind-blowing concept that things can look bigger or smaller depending on how far away they are. You can actually make this experiment at home quite easily. Allow me to demonstrate. 
Oh wow, it is so big. Oh wait, it's taking up less of my peripheral and now looks smaller. What a mind-blowing concept. Maybe the same is true about the sun that is in the sky and very far away. Could it be? As you take up the argument that the sun is measurably, observably, demonstrably larger than the Earth, okay? But I want the debate either to be live online or recorded and then posted on all our social media platforms. If my contestant is a professional academic, then I demand that our debate will either live in front of their entire class or that the entire class, nay, the entire academic department be invited to that debate or at least watch a recording of that debate in their classes. So this guy is just gonna fly to some university and just debunk the entire body of science <laughs> because when they look into the sky, the sun looks small. <laughs> All right. You know what? Let me go one step further. I challenge any panel discussion of academics or farmers who wish to contest me that the sun is very clearly and demonstrably smaller than the Earth. I welcome a whole panel league of you to get together and contest it with me. Make it at least three against me. This is like so confident. This is the embodiment of the subreddit. And contest it. Make it at least three against me so I can slam dunk on all three of you when I say it's in fact the sun is smaller than the Earth. And none of you can demonstrate otherwise, nor can say other. The sun is smaller than the Earth. That's a fact. It's not my opinion. Opinion. You know one interesting thing about the argument of just uh, perspective or observation? You know this whole source that you know your source for Earth being round books my source for Earth being round with eyeball is that your eyes don't capture anything. If you stand on top of a very, very large ball, your immediate surrounding will look flat because the bending in that area is gonna be so incredibly negligible that you won't be able to tell. That is like one example. Light can even bend in space if you have large gravitational pulls. Our eyes don't capture the entire light spectrum and so on so forth. So this whole argument that you know your eyeball alone would debunk a bunch of stuff that wouldn't really be visible to you in the first place is absolutely wild, and I think it suggests just a lack of understanding about how reality works. We will always experience the universe from a subjective perspective, depending on what we know, what we have learned, what senses we possess, and so on and so forth. You will never actually have a completely objective view of the universe, and this is also something that is recognized in many bodies of science, and when you try to explore, for example, the origin of the universe. We are inherently limited by our subjective experience. That is very much how it is to be a human. So to suggest that we don't need any tools or anything and we should just trust our eyeballs it's like it's like thousands of years outdated we know that our eyes can't perceive everything it's such weird argumentation if you ask me georgia the country or georgia the u.s state oh <laughs> georgia the country oh no such place get the mental help you need <laughs> if you're literate give this article a read oh speaking of of bad geography <laughs> It's also stamped out, I wonder which one is gonna win, bad geography or flat earth. Let's see by the end of this baby. 10 years, it's like 15% of your life. Me. Oh, wow, he actually thinks the average lifespan is 150 years. No, 10, if 10, oh my, oh my god, no, oh. You reverse the numbers, you reverse the numbers. If you said 15 years was 10%, of your lifespan, then it would be 150 years, but it's the opposite. You, a bitch, a bitch, you punch it in. Bad math! We have our first bingo, but boo! Yeah, hell yeah! We have anti vax, flatter of basic grammar, double down, and bad math. Congratulations! First bingo of the day. Whee! Happiness, I feel so fulfilled. 10 years is 15% of your life. Sam, the type of guy to think human live for 150 years old skull. There is an entire comment section just like debunking this math. Oh no. 15% of your life was gonna live to 150. Uh, uh, oh god, <clears throat> I'm allergic to this kind of stuff. Sam thinks he will make it till 150 years old. <laughs> <sighs> okay, I feel better now. I, I let it all out. Humans were the first animals to start eating red meat, giving us much more energy that lasts longer than the other animals in the animal kingdom. What kind of meat are you suggesting every other predator since the dawn of time was eating exactly? Did they all stuck to chicken and fish? Don't exactly know to be honest. I didn't double check this, but this is the truth. I just know humans were the first to go after red meat instead of plants. Okay, so not even chicken and fish. Everything just ate plants until humans came along and like bada bing bada boom, I'ma eat your butt. You know? Nice. I would assume other predators ate aquatic animals and plants. Oh. Okay. Well, this, this just falls under, like, really bad evolution, doesn't it? <laughs> we almost have another bingo here. If we just get some bad women's anatomy, we got a bingo. That is beautiful. I'm looking forward to that bingo. I think this person 
has just gotten confused because I recognize some of the facts in what they're saying, but it's just attached to the wrong thing. So for example, humans eating meat is a part of the evolutionary theory, not that we were the first to eat meat, but meat contains enough calories that it allowed our brains to grow because a big brain drains a lot of calories. So there is a correlating argument there that we were able to grow such big brains because we started eating meat. So that is one thing. The other part of it, giving us much more energy that lasts longer. I mean, we sweat, which means that we can travel longer distances without resting and that kind of stuff. There are human physiological traits that are very beneficial for like long distance travel and hunting and wearing other animals down. This is something we used to do way back in the day before we could, you know, uh, make a living by recording YouTube videos regarding confident and correct memes. <laughs> but anyway, so, so it feels like they have read uh, some of this stuff, but it's just attached to the wrong things, you know? I am now picturing a T-Rex with a fishing rod in its little arms. That is adorable! Be like, <laughs> oh god. I need a plushie of this. Bad evolution plushies. That would be such a good line of plushies. Oh my god. Oh my, yes. Yes, bad evolution plushies. Let me know in the comments. Thank you. Okay, go in and grab a salt every day at least, please. Um, it seems like you don't even know what you're talking about because the FDA recommended limit is 2.3 grams. Haha. <laughs> Milligrams, you effing moron! Go eat 2.3 grams of salt, please. Well, okay, it is 2.3 thousand milligrams, which is 2.3 grams. I know the FDA uses milligrams for the unit, but the number is also important. <laughs> Measurements are important, but also bingo is important, especially... This is bad math, right? I think this one was bad math. There we go. <laughs> Whee! Max daily salt, 2,300 milligrams per day. It is very important to get measurements right, thank you. Don't ever call me cis. I'm in fact heterosexual and heterophobia. Well, those two are not mutually exclusive though, they mean different things. Thank you, poo sounds gross like cysts. <laughs> A dictionary, cisgender, denoting or relating to a person whose sense of personal identity and gender corresponds with their sex assigned at birth and etc etc. Unnecessary, it's called straight and the opposite of straight is a weirdo. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think you know how opposites work because none of the opposites you have suggested are actually correct. I mean, I would, I would say it, it, it's kind of, but I say it's more basic grammar is like the most consistent thing here, which kind of ties into a bit of transphobia, I'll be honest, but like, it's just basic grammar all around is the opposite to dish is dish, but it's really not dish it. Idiot Twitter artist doesn't know how percentages work, thinks a 13 character commission would cost $8,000. Oh my god, okay, let's look into this, shall we? Wow, there are too many characters. Well, the Paper Mario style, having several details, is $45. Each extra character adds 50% to the price. So with 13 characters, not including the creature in the background, would be a total of $8,757. Not counting the background, okay. Okay, I understand what they did here. Instead of adding 50% of the original price, you know, additive every time, so 50% of 45 would be, what, 22.5, if I'm not mistaken? So, like, two characters would cost 45 plus 22.5, and then for every extra character, we, you would just add 22.5 to this price, and then you get the total. But instead, this person has added, multiplied by 1.5, every single time, right? So it works for the first step, but the problem is that you get essentially the same logic as you have in finance with return on return, right? It's just 50% and insanely large. So you're not taking 50% of the original price for every character beyond the first extra character, you're taking 50 extra percent of everything. So like the last final character is gonna be like hundreds if not thousands of dollars in price just because you had other added characters as well. It, it, it goes like this, you know? <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean by 8.757. Is that $87.57 dollars? No, it's 8,700 USD. Oh, like 8,000? <laughs> yes, that doesn't add up though. Even if I were just getting the same amount of characters as in that image, 11, wouldn't it just be 45 base price plus 22.5 for each character amounting to 270? Yeah, exactly. That's how it should work. It's an additive process. Also, the big dragon would not be in the image, by the way. No, because each character adds 50% to the price. Here, since there are 13 characters, the three babies and other two characters sitting in the chair and the eight more characters gives a total of 8,757. 
Okay. So basically, if you follow this logic, if you were to add 14 characters, one more, that wouldn't cost $8,700. It would cost like, what, like 13,000, 14,000 something? <laughs> because you would just add 50% of the 8,000. <laughs> Just to confirm, every additional character adds 22.5, right? No! Every extra character adds 50% to the price of the commission. God, this is so exhausting! For example, let's say you want a full-color style drawing with two characters. That drawing style is priced at $45, and the extra character adds 50% to the price, it will be 67.5. Yeah, exactly, you add 22.5 to it. In my commission table, it actually says so. That's not 22.5. So they have 45 plus 50% is 67.5. Point five. But it is though. Oh, oh my god. You know, you know, you know it's reached rock bottom when they're sending screenshots of the calculator, but they don't actually understand what they're typing into it. Oh my god. Exactly what characters do you want? I feel like we're both getting confused. No, no, you're not both confused. Oh god. 50% means half. Half of 45 is 22.5. Unless you mean each character would add 67.5 by itself? Uh, by the way, in your calculation, you're adding $45 to 50% of $45, giving you 67.5. 67.5 itself is not 50% of 45. That would make sense since it's a greater number. 67.5 is 150% of $45. 100% plus 50%. I would rather just get in the old flat style. You are not understanding! <laughs> 50% added with 45, thus given 67, and again 50% added to each until the character is covered. Oh no, they have some wacky, like, iPhone calculator, so they just do plus 50% on every one, and they just click plus 50, plus 50, plus 50, plus 50. Oh my god! You see, kids, the old argument about, like, I don't need to learn math because we have calculators in our phones, this is why that argument doesn't work, you know? You can have the best tools in the world, but if you don't understand how it works, the quality of the tools doesn't matter. Yeah. So, for example, with character 3, the calculation is 67.5 plus 50, and the amount would be 101? Okay, since it's the classic style, it will be flat color. Flat color style is 30 each character, 50% to the price, total of 5,800. 30 plus 50%. <laughs> Rounding it up, it will be 5,839. <laughs> Sorry when I use the translator. It changes the dots and commas in the numbers. Yeah, no, that's not the problem. That, that isn't the problem at all. <laughs> okay, I see how you're coming up with your calculation, but your math is wrong here. When you just put plus 50 again and again, it adds 50% to that new price, not 50% to the base price. I mean, the fact that this person also doesn't realize how you can go from $45 to like 9,000, you know, for the same kind of basic commission, just adding more faces to it, is absolutely wild. Like, oh my god. You're off by a factor like, what, 200? You're suggesting that adding 10 characters would make it 200 times as expensive, and not just 10 times as expensive, but, you know, with 50% off, it would really be, like, 5 times as expensive, or something like that. So, like, that should be a red flag. You know, 200 times more expensive is much bigger than 5 times as expensive. You know, just approximate brain maths should tell you that there's something wrong here. Another way to think about it, no matter how high the total goes, the amount added should stay the same. That doesn't happen with adding percentages. To confirm, it's just half of the base price that gets added to each new character, not half the total. <laughs> I wonder how many hours this took to argue. Wait, let me check the timestamps. The first one started at like 5.30 p.m. And then when I go to the last image here, let's see very quick, it, it's like <laughs> 7 p.m. So this took like an hour and a half to argue. <laughs> So now in three character full color example, it gets to character three, you're adding 50% of 65. In fact, no, because I explained to you previously, each one is added as I showed you before, since which one is instead of sum of 50%? <sighs> Let's just step back if I was getting a full image. No, no, listen, I think neither of us are getting anywhere with this. This is how I worked all this time, as I have several friends, there have been no problems. You have some really rich friends if they don't care about a price difference between $45 and 8.7 thousand for a commission. Holy sh**. Nothing bad happens, in fact, it's considered good because of the work it takes to make the piece because of the character's specifications. However, I see that you're not understanding how it's handled. Oh, I think everyone understands. I think... <laughs> oh my god. Because as I explained before, each 50% is a character, and each one is added with the result of the previous sum. Okay, so it's just exponential. Why wouldn't you just buy, you know, each character individually then? You just glue it together yourself in Photoshop. You know, freaking hell. Each character adds 50% of the base price. Okay, so the description is even wrong. They're not actually arguing their own price table. So their own price table is actually correct. They just don't know how to add it themselves. 
That is wild. Okay, so I really like your art style, and I want to try working this out. First, let's just establish each in character is 50%, or in other terms, half of the base price that is commissioned, as per your commission sheet. The base price being the starting price, correct? Just please give me a yes or no. The base price is the initial price. For example, the starting price flat color is 30. Each character has 50% and adds up, as I showed you previously. Right, now can you please tell me what 50% or half of 30 is? Keeping in mind 30 is the base price. 30 plus 50 is 45. <laughs> 30 plus 50% plus 50% <laughs> They're still doing the same thing. They're just adding percentages on percentages. <laughs> Let's disregard the calculator for the time being. I do like how this person likes this guy's art so much that they just try so hard to give them a little math lesson to get the commissions right. I would have given up ages ago, fam. Oh my god. Can you tell me what half of 30 is? What is 30 divided by 2? I think you still don't understand. I even sent you the sum of each one of the 13 characters. Oh my god, if there's one thing I despise, it's people that get really basic stuff wrong, but they're so confident that the other person is like mistaken about their progress instead of just that you don't understand percentages. Oh my god, it's so frustrating. It's like talking to a wall, but the wall is also rambling nonsensical math. Holy crap. It's 15! Half of 30 is 15! Can you at least agree on this? I'm sorry, but I don't see this working out and I have to go wish you good night and hope you can find an artist to the commercial. <laughs> ah! 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 I know I put ARG on this for a reason. ARG! Okay, now it feels better. I let it all out. Do we have a bingo? No, we don't have a bingo. Sad. Next post, please. But I think there is a good takeaway here, right? It's this whole argument that, you know, if your tools get better, you don't have to learn math or whatever. This is an excellent example. I know people sometimes use the gotcha moment when teachers used to say back in the day, like, you don't have your calculator with you all the time, so you still need to learn math. This is why you still need to learn math. It's not because you won't have a calculator with you. It's because tools are only as good as the person using it, including math. This is a cross-out section of DNA. It's the flower of life and it holds the golden ratio. Mathematics is the language of the universe. Uh, is, I think this is just like pasta? That doesn't look like a helix. This cross-cut DNA looks suspiciously like the pasta that was in my grandson's Paw Patrol mac and cheese. I don't even know what to put this under. It's just pasta. <laughs> Bad evolution, maybe? I don't know. It just looks... Is it pasta? I feel so gaslit by this post, man. Flat Earth research. A compass can't work on a bar. Look at this, it would just point into space, magnetic north. But it does work when it's flat, because there's just a giant magnetic mountain there. You know, ignore the fact that, you know, the magnetic field is shaped like this, around like the thing, and it comes out so, and then like, you know, that's sort of how it works. And like, even, even if magnets just worked in a straight line or, or whatever, I don't even know what the argument is, but even if that was the case, it would still like sort of work though. Like, oh my, oh my God. Okay, I think, I think, I mean, this definitely goes into flat earth as well, but I'm, for good measure, I'm just gonna put this with this one in because it sort of made me cry. So, bad facts, don't be a sheep. Uh -huh. Wild conspiracy, opinions, fact. Bingo, baby. I'm so happy. Yes, indeed. If we get a bad review, we also have another bingo here. Man, this is going good. Oh my god, I'm so happy. Circumcision permanently alters the brain. I mean, I think circumcision is a little bit weird in the first place, but this isn't why. Executive functions. That's the part of the penis that thinks. After circumcision, the child's brain never returned its baseline configuration. Okay, what what is the baseline configuration? Fine motor functions. Memories are stored and processed. The brain of the circumcised infant is permanently changed by the surgery. <laughs> I love <laughs> that this doesn't like extrapolate on any of the things. It's just like, oh, here are fine motor functions in the brain. Circumcision changed the brain. Does it change the thing you pointed at? Or is or is this just random? Do you haven't like <laughs> you haven't argued anything here? <laughs> is this a picture of a brain? That's it. Okay, you know what? I'm, I don't. I don't even know how to put this under. Like, what would, <laughs> what would this be? Source? I made it up. Yeah, this is a good source. What's your source? I made it the fuck up. Bingo. Woo! <laughs> Yippee! Still waiting for someone to prove the Earth spins using the scientific method. No, you're not still waiting for someone to prove it. You're just sitting there ignoring everything and growing old while doing it. Flat Earth. <laughs> Thank you. All celestial elevation angles require Earth to be flat. What the f are you talking about? Angles don't exist unless stuff is flat? 
Ugh. I'm gonna put this under Argus. Well, God, it paint. F what do you mean? What do you mean? Chemtrails UK! How to defeat the chemtrails on a hot sunny day? Get a tea towel, soak it in cheap clean vinegar, then hang it on the washing line. I am on my third go today. The scum was completely covered in milky white crap, so I did my tea towel thing twice and an hour later they were gone. Oh, okay, okay, so you hang a wet towel outside. And if it hangs there for a bit, the trails after the planes disappears. You know there's such a thing that correlation isn't causation, right? I bet you money, I'm willing to bet you money if you do this experiment tomorrow and you just put a random rock in the yard, the chemtrails will still disappear after an hour. You wanna know why? Because they have nothing to do with each other. That's why. There is even a Simpson episode about this, where Lisa tries to teach Homer <laughs> about correlation and causation, and she says, you wanna buy this rock from me? It keeps tigers away. And he's like, nah, come on, there's no such thing. And she's like, there are no tigers around, and he buys the rock. And that completely, of course, bushes the point of, like, causation and correlation argument. The same thing here. You know, it, it has nothing to do with each other. This is, for example, also why control groups are so important in medicine. Imagine you are given a pill that will cure your cold, and in five days you feel better. Well, usually in five days you feel better after a cold anyway. So was it the pill, or was it just your natural process of getting rid of the virus? Who the frick knows? This is why you need control groups and large sample sizes. And I bet you if you had sample sizes and control groups regarding chemtrails and wet towels, you, you would get the result that it doesn't matter, the towels do nothing! Stupid towel! Don't know if they noticed the huge hole I made in their chemtrailing, but they came back. You mean the scheduled flights, taking people places. Yeah, I imagine so. So one more go should dissipate these in a few hours. So, so now we have like a whole conspiracy group on Facebook. They're just hanging tea-dipped towels in their yards, and they think they're like sucking up chem. This is kind of funny. Something about the vinegar neutralizes or alkanizes them. I've cleared a massive hole of clear blue sky just above me for most of the afternoon now. If we all do it, the amount of money they're wasting on these chemtrails and we zap them all out with tea towels soaked in clear vinegar. Alright, you know what? Out of all the conspiracies and stupid stuff I see online, this one is more harmless. Go nuts. Hang hang vinegar towels in the yard, whatever, I don't care, go go nuts, if you think it helps, whatever, at least it keeps you distracted from more harmful things like, I don't know, anti-vax rhetoric. Genesis 7 -11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. And here are craters with puddles in them. Oh, is this just like, uh, they're like drainage. Is that like Earth has shower drains? Is that the argument? Okay, do we have anything about? I don't. I don't know, man. I don't even know. What would I put this on? God, uh, just bad science, I guess. I'll put another one for the last post too with this towel thing. <laughs> Thank you. My GF. People talking about horoscope and stuff. Me, an astronomer. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Oh, the, I feel this in my spine. You will never change what you tolerate. Research, hashtag flat earth, no curve here. Can we all agree on that? I love flat earthers because they remind me that though I'm a failure, there are always people more disappointing than me. You see, this plays into the theory of relativity. You're only a disappointment if other people are less disappointing than you are. Some f that's sort of wholesome, right? Oh, we can put this on the sort of- Oh my god! Actually, well, actually, sort of wholesome. Maybe that's- I'm gonna- I'm gonna change this one. Sort of wholesome. <laughs> Don't tell me I can't change my own bingo card to get more bingos as I go along. Cease. Access to why, people. It's not a human right. Who the fricks thinks that it should be? Our government does. Segregation being outlawed is what I mean. So, you're advocating for segregation? What the frick are you talking about? Why people shouldn't be forced to congregate with non-whites? And disintegration is out like such a thought? Well... Okay. Uh... Uh... <laughs> um... Uh, well, it's not so sneaky... <laughs> sneaky racism. We should have segregation because people don't deserve access to bask in the glory of my whiteness. That's a sentence I have never seen before. Cheers.
I am a medical coder for 10 plus years. I have yet to see a patient getting treated for measles, mumps, tuberculosis, diphtheria, rubella, or pertussis. These vaccines have no need to be given. You know, I was just talking about that argument recently, how some people go like, Isn't it weird how only the unvaxxed people get the disease? Well, well, d congratulations. <laughs> Oh, is this also bingo? I forgot to shout out. Bad facts. Don't be a sheep. Crying while conspiracy opinion equals facts. This is beautiful. We, we got so many bingos rolling, baby. Emma Watson with the bag. Anyone notice the shadow looks like a man to me? Because we can always tell, you know, except never. I'm just gonna pop this on transphobia for good measure. <laughs> the we can always tell crowd never fails to deliver. Or like they always fail to deliver, but they never fail to deliver the comedic part. You know, that's what I mean. Dog whistle training. Customer review, one star out of five. Probably use her error, but can't make it work. Tried over and over, watched videos of how to's, still can't get a sound out of it. So you can't hear the dog whistle. So you leave a one-star review saying it's broken. But you're in luck, my friend. I have a bingo for this bad review. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. We have a double bingo with this one. Yes. Any scientific evidence of this theory yet? <sighs> None that you would accept. No. I mean, what would that fall under? Just like, just like bad science, I think. I just ignore things that I don't like. Because that's cool. Even though this has been established for like a very long time. Or as my dangerously stupid coworker once said, It's suspicious how they make the virus only hurt people who aren't getting those shots. <laughs> exactly! Exactly! A great mind's thunk of the luch. Microsoft Edge. It's almost the end of the year and we want to see how you hashtag Edge. Okay, show us your most memorable edges. <laughs> this post has been deleted. Oh! Microsoft Edge Social Media Manager, you sweet summer child! No! <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. What is this? What's this bad math? I think this is bad math. An Instagram spiritual page is crying, you sweet summer child in transphobia. Yippee! <laughs> oh, we also have this one. <laughs> Show us all the videos of you edging, dear Twitter. <laughs> I am a, I am a wholesome social media manager. One star. I followed the recipe exactly, except I replaced oil with applesauce. <laughs> Unfortunately, I did not turn out well. Its consistency is neither brownie-like nor cake-like. Could it be with a random ingredient replacement? No. I can't eat it. Sadly, we'll have to dispose the whole thing. I don't know what went wrong as I followed the recipe exactly. You know, apart from that part where you replaced like the literal key ingredient of oil with applesauce. <laughs> but I gotta put this on the bad review. That's so hilarious. Oh my god. I followed it exactly. Well, according to your own post, you did indeed not. Circumcision plays a role in developing autism. Ugh. I mean, I'll, I'll get back to that good old point where like, I, I think it's weird, but this ain't it, fam. To be honest, I don't want a girlfriend with saggy bobs, cause she doesn't know how to take care of them. Ah, uh, hold on, let me just turn off gravity for a sec. Nah man, you get to see the most saggies when it's from women who does not wear bra throughout their whole life. It could also cause health problems. If your bobs sag as they're very, very big, then it's valid. Oh <laughs> yes indeed, let's just pop this good old gentleman out of bad women's anatomy for another double bingo. This is beautiful. Well, not really beautiful, but it's beautiful in like, you know, a horrific way, you know? Like, like a piece of art can be very disturbing, but you can still appreciate the art behind it. That's sort of this. Imagine you go back to her place after the first date and she pulls out one of these bad boys. PP meter. Small, no size, average, normal size, enormous, king size, mighty, extra size. Wait a second. The mighty is like the size of a bob, right? So, so like this, babe, maybe that's the circumference. This? I'm gonna be honest, fam. If this is the kind of size you're rocking, I think you would just pass out a blood feud wh when you get bricked up. <laughs> okay, anyway, we're gonna put this under some Batman's anatomy. <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> I love Batman's anatomy. World of engineering. Don't use a calculator, use your brain. 20 plus 20 minus 20 times 0 plus 2 plus 2 equals question mark. That's 44. Answer is four. Use your brain, not calculate it, madame. This is... Oh, yes, indeed, you see. <sighs> you know, the ironic part here, Mr. Confidently Incorrect, is that if you used a calculator for this, you would also get 44. So, like, you didn't use a calculator 
either. It, it, that's the weird part, and you're accusing them of using a calculator, which would also get them the right answer as long as you type it correctly. Anyway, put us on the bad math, boom. <laughs> I think this one used to be the bad math, right? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure at this point, but, but yeah, that's good. Number six, incorrect. Differentiate this one. Okay, so we say the differentiation is 32 times the parentheses of 4x minus 7 to the power of 7. I can actually do this one. Uh, may maybe this is interesting for, for the squad fam at home, all right? Let's see, do I still have the Click Academy? Oh yeah, we do. So for this math example, we have y equals parentheses 4x minus 7 to the power of 8. So a differentiation is essentially how fast something changes. That is the best, like, pragmatic way to explain what a differentiation is. And you can type it, for example, as they did here, like dy divided by dx. In some instances, you will also write this as y prime. It depends a bit on the course and where you're at in math. So essentially, how a differentiation works is that we want to know how fast this whole equation changes, and that's how you calculate it. So what you do is that you start off with the internal differentiation, which is essentially this, what is inside of the parentheses. And a differentiation is how fast something changes. So the 7 is just 0, because a constant doesn't change. You know, it's just a flat curve if you were to plot it. 4x changes with the velocity of 4, because that's how steep the curve would be, y equals 4x. So the differentiation of this internal part is just 4. That's the only part that remains. Then you have the external differentiation, which is just the power. And what happens is that the 8 goes down to in front of this whole parentheses, and you get a minus 1 on the exponent itself, which means that we have a times 8 here. Okay, and then after that, this one remains the same internal, so it's just 4x minus 7 to the power of 7, because we have a minus 1 in the exponent. And this in turn would equal 32 parentheses 4x minus 7 to the power of 7. And now you have successfully differentiated this little equation up here. Absolutely amazing little homework. Thank you so much for listening to Click Academy. And it looks like the person in the example did it right. Look, 32, 4x minus 7 to the power of 7. But this is wrong. The correct answer is 32, 4x minus 7 to the power of 7. Which is the same. Oh my god, I feel the pain of this. All right, bingo time. I think it might be the last one we have on the bingo card. I'm so excited. Look at this. We have a full bingo card. Bad homework. Yes, indeed. We, we have a full bingo card, baby. I am so happy. What an accomplishment. Hey, what is Winnie the Pooh's favorite color? Yellow. No, it's red because of his shirt. No, it's yellow because he loves honey. You have no idea what you're talking about. Then Pooh says, yellow, like honey. That's my favorite color. Ooh, things are heating up in the Winnie the Pooh fandom. <laughs> I like how they actually sourced it as well. That's beautiful. Rocks do not reflect light. Never, ever. Basically, okay, anything you can see either produces light or reflects light. That, that's, how, that's what you see. You literally see the light bouncing into your eyeballs from whatever it bounced from. That's also how colors work. Someone asked me, if it's its own light, why is the crescent lit part always facing the sun? How would you answer? <laughs> Watch the ethereal video and consider electromagnetism. Salt water is a conductor and so it would make sense for the side facing the sun to be lighting up. But we just don't know things about God's amazing creation. Read the last five chapters of Job. We will never have answers and we will never know the full parameters of Earth. But it definitely not a sphere and water is always level. Okay, uh, for the sake of argument, here is a rock that has googly eyes, very important. Here is a light source, okay? So if I put this light source right here, you see how this rock like glows up? That's because the light from this flashlight bounces on this rock into the camera and into your eyeball. You see the difference? This is how the f***ing moon works, just a bit larger. Wow. Rocks never reflect light, you know, except when they do. I, w I would just pop this one, like, under, I don't know, bad science or something. Where's ba bad science experiment? Nah, not really. They didn't do an experiment. It's just bad science. I think it's this one. <laughs> They're so covered, man. Sunlight, warm yellow, colored, fastens photosynthesis, controls vitamins. But moonlight is cool white colored, prevents photosynthesis, and lacks vitamins. When both are totally different, then how can moon be reflecting sun's light? Ever thought about that? Do it now. Think about it. How can it be a reflection if these random stuff I just made up is accurate? 
prevents photosynthesis. Maybe it's just because a lot of plants go to sleep during night because there isn't enough light to like, you know, produce a lot of photosynthesis. You know, maybe that's it. Maybe it's just due to the amount of light, a lot of these things. But we're gonna point this one under the uh, source. I made it up. <laughs> I just listed random made up BS, and that and that's my source. Testosterone. Men have a sex drive, women don't. These dudes always telling on themselves will never not be funny. Except for a precious few. Basic biology. It takes a lot of courage to come out and admit women find you off-putting. I am proud of you. Of course! <laughs> Woo! Explain why men have 12 ribs and females have 13. Atheist. What? I think this is like an Adam and Eve sort of argument, but you you can you can just look at any scan, fam. That, no, that is not true. We all have an equal number of ribs. I bet you live a very sad life of confusion. Explain the Bohemian Grove. If there is a devil, there is a god. Don't worry. We think the devils are equally childish. Secret societies have nothing to do with the devil. In that, the devil doesn't exist. I'm quite happy with my life. Twenty-four <laughs> ribs and all. This is absolutely wild. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna put- I'm gonna put this under like... Eh, maybe like bad, bad women's anatomy. It's good. That's good. I do see this turning into like some scary anti-trans argument though, where they start looking at people's ribs and it's like, You're not the real man or woman or whatever, and it's like, you're just looking at ribs. And obviously people typically have the same amount of ribs. <laughs> Jesus Christ, don't use this as a source. Well, that is all the posts for today. Let's take a look at the bingo card, shall we? Oh my god, everything is stamped to crap, isn't it? We had a full bingo card, yet again, because... Because these posts are just so beautiful, aren't they? Thank you so much for showing up to this video, you wonderful, beautiful bean, and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And take care, and I hope to see you again in the very near future. Mwah. Oh, I wanted to record, like, a video. Oh, too bad. <laughs> As usual. <sighs>